Hi guys, welcome back. This is Kel. If you're new here, my name is Kel. I am a pharmacist and also a type A aortic dissection survivor as of a few months ago. Um, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about metoprolol. I had made a video last week about warfarin and a lot of people found it really useful so I thought it would be a good idea to make one about metoprolol because I've had a lot of questions from people about metoprolol and just beta blockers and what they do and just everyone seems to be curious about beta blockers. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Before I do, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel if you're interested in hearing more videos like this and also liking this video if you do find it useful. And so we'll go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing that we're going to go over is the mechanism of action of metoprolol. So metoprolol is what's called a beta blocker. You may have heard this term before and that just refers to basically how metoprolol works. So as the name suggests, a beta blocker is blocking beta. So you may be asking yourself, what does that mean? And I'm going to explain it to you. So there are different beta receptors in our body. For this video, we're going to talk about beta-1 receptors and beta-2 receptors. So in terms of beta blockers, not all beta blockers are created equally. So there's very there's a very wide range of beta blockers. You may have seen metoprolol, carvedilol, like all the ones that end in LOL basically are beta blockers for the most part. So there are beta blockers that are what's called cardioselective and there's beta blockers that are non-cardioselective. In this case, for metoprolol, that belongs to the class that is cardioselective. So what does that mean? So that means that metoprolol is focusing on the beta receptors that are in our heart. There are different beta receptors in our body. There's beta-1 receptors, which are predominantly found in the heart. There is beta-2 receptors, which are predominantly found in the smooth muscles of our airways. And not to say that that's exactly where they are and that's the only place you can find them. Of course, they are in other areas, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna focus on those areas. So for metoprolol, because it's a cardioselective beta blocker, it's focusing on the beta-1 receptors, which are located predominantly in the heart. Essentially, metoprolol is just working on those cardiac beta receptors. So it's really honing in, it's going in there and it's blocking those receptors. And when those receptors are blocked, that's what leads to less norepinephrine, epinephrine in our body and helps calm our heart and it helps lower our blood pressure. So metoprolol by itself really isn't that great at lowering blood pressure. If you are taking it, it's most likely more for your heart rate and more to just decrease the stress on your heart. There's something called sheer stress and metoprolol helps to decrease that. It's essentially kind of probably what first comes to your mind when you hear that word sheer stress, just the stress from the blood hitting the walls of your heart. Um, so oftentimes if you have very high sheer stress in your body, that can cause damage to your heart over a long period of time. So that would be in the case that you have high blood pressure that increases the sheer stress occurring in your heart. So it's very important for patients like myself who have had an aortic dissection and who are trying to decrease the stress on the heart to take metoprolol or to take a cardioselective beta blocker in order to prevent that stress and prevent another aneurysm from developing. So there are other indications for which a beta blocker like metoprolol can be used. So it can be used in heart failure. It can, like I said, it can be used for hypertension or high blood pressure, but it's typically not the first line because it really doesn't have that great of an effect on lowering blood pressure. And it also is often prescribed after a patient has a heart attack. To, and like I said, it's mostly to just prevent that stress on the heart, to just keep our hearts nice and relaxed and smooth sailing because we really don't want to aggravate our heart any more than it already is. So a lot of people are often very interested to know the side effects of metoprolol. Of course, we all want to know the side effects of the medications that we're putting into our body. So that's a natural question to ask. For any medication, there's always a laundry list full of side effects. So I'm going to just go over the big ones. Of course, metoprolol has 
lots of side effects i'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that it's a perfect drug and it's not going to cause anything because of course it's an unnatural substance that we're putting into our body there's always going to be side effects but when it comes to medications and when it comes to medicine it's always weighing out the benefits versus the risk and really the benefits of metoprolol and of beta blockers is so much more than any minuscule risk that it can cause a lot of the side effects that are listed on a package insert or like when your pharmacist gives you your medication and they have that whole paper full of side effects um, it can sound scary and you might look at that and be like why am i taking this medication but to be honest the chance of a lot of those happening is less than one percent the biggest side effect that does occur with metoprolol is what's called bradycardia which is just a fancy word for a slow heart rate so this might sound expected to you it's not completely unexpected that you would have a slow heart rate especially when the way that we learned that metoprolol works and it's really decreasing a lot of the the norepinephrine and the epinephrine in our body which would make our heart rate go up so because we're lowering that then our heart rate is going down because our heart is much more calm and it makes sense too that we want to keep our heart rate low because that's going to decrease the stress on our heart as well so really this side effect isn't that concerning because honestly it's kind of what we would want to happen with metoprolol and it really is kind of the goal in a sense not to say that if your heart rate is like 30 that that's okay if you are having very low heart rates i would say less than about 50 kind of depending on the age for me i'm only 30 years old so a heart rate of 50 is okay but for a person who may be a little bit older maybe in their 70s or 80s a heart rate of 50 might be a little bit too low so in terms of that, you really should consult with your cardiologist and with your doctor who's taking care of you and who's prescribing your medications to make sure that that's okay for you. Because metoprolol lowers heart rate, it can cause dizziness that's when age kind of plays a factor as well but of course it can cause dizziness for everyone but in older populations this dizziness can be a little bit more concerning because a person who may be a little bit older and a little bit less mobile when they're taking metoprolol they may stand up very quickly and feel a little bit dizzy and it puts you at a higher risk for falls but of course, you should always use caution when first taking metoprolol or first taking a beta blocker. See how it makes you feel before you start doing anything crazy. I wouldn't suggest taking metoprolol and then going skydiving for the first time. If you do, let me know how that goes because I don't know, I, that actually sounds kind of cool. So it is expected to have a little bit of dizziness, maybe a little bit of drowsiness with metoprolol. That's perfectly normal. Of course, if it's anything excessive, that's when you would want to let your doctor know. And that being said, if you do experience a low heart rate or a low blood pressure, there chances are that your doctor has already given you some parameters for which to hold your beta blocker. A lot of times the doctor will write on your prescription, hold, like skip your dose of metoprolol if your heart rate is less than 50. So if your doctor has given you those parameters and discussed that with you, then make sure that you are following that to prevent your heart rate or your blood pressure from dropping too low. So something else that's really important about beta blockers is that they should never be stopped abruptly. What I mean by this is never stop taking metoprolol just all of a sudden, just one day you wake up and you're like i don't want to take metoprolol anymore and you just stop taking it and you throw your bottle in the trash don't do that please i mean really don't do that with any medication <laughs> unless your doctor tells you to but for metoprolol for beta blockers specifically when it is stopped abruptly especially if you've been on a high dose it can cause rebound effects and rebound effects would be it can cause basically the opposite of what it's doing. So by stop, so your body gets used to being on this medication, all of a sudden you stop it, then it can cause your heart rate to shoot up, it can cause your blood pressure to shoot up, and that's not something that we want, obviously. So it's always important to gradually taper off the medication, of course, at the discretion and the direction of your provider. And once that you're on a lower dose, it can be tapered off. But essentially, if you're on a stable dose and you've been on that maintenance dose for a long time, please don't stop taking it because we really don't want those rebound effects to happen. So like I mentioned earlier, not all beta blockers are created equal. So actually, 
within the cardio selective beta blockers and even within metoprolol itself not all metoprolol is created equal so there's a little bit of metoprolol inception going on here i'm just kidding i really don't know what that means so when it comes to metoprolol there are two different kinds of formulations there's ir which stands for immediate release and er which stands for extended release so like the names pretty much say immediate release is something when you take it it's just immediately releasing into your body and starting to help you whereas the extended release is going into your body and it's formulated in a way that it releases over a longer period of time so metoprolol has two different names so if you look on your prescription bottle you might see metoprolol tartrate and you might see metoprolol succinate so metoprolol tartrate is the ir that's the immediate release formulation. And oftentimes you can also tell because this one is dosed multiple times a day. So if you're taking metoprolol twice a day, chances are you're taking metoprolol tartrate, which is the immediate release. If you're taking metoprolol once a day, then chances are that it's metoprolol succinate, and that's the extended release. Not to say that that is the black and white rule. Of course, there can be some people who are taking the immediate release once a day or extended release twice a day. I don't know if you have specific reasons for that. So if you are taking it differently than I just mentioned, don't freak out. Just talk to your doctor. I'm sure they have a good reason for what they're doing, but that's the general rule that immediate release is typically twice a day. Extended release is typically once a day. Other than that, there really isn't a huge difference between the two formulations. You may be asking, why would I take one and not the other? And really the answer to that is just patient preference. So with medications, a huge thing that is often an obstacle is getting patients to actually take their medication. So that's why the extended release often is preferred for people who don't really want to take a lot of medications multiple times a day. A lot of times people, your doctor may start you out on the immediate release formulation and eventually once you get to a good stable dose, they'll transition you over to the extended release so that you don't have to be taking medications twice a day. Some people just don't care and they're like, you know what, I'm taking medications anyways. If I have to take it two times a day, what's the big deal? And so they're okay with taking it that way and that's perfectly fine too. For me, I take the metoprolol tartrate, the immediate release one, twice a day and that works for me but eventually my cardiologist does want me to transition to the once a day so that i don't have to be living my life revolving around taking medications something to mention is in terms of administration of these medications the only other difference that kind of stands out is that the immediate release is better absorbed with food so it is recommended to take the immediate release formulation with food or just not take it on an empty stomach the extended release doesn't seem to have that issue. It seems to be okay with just taking it on an empty stomach with or without food. It doesn't tend to change the absorption of the medication too much. So if you have been taking the metoprolol immediate release without food for years and you're like, oh my gosh, I've been taking it wrong, it's okay. You can just start taking it with food now or just keep taking it like you're taking it if it's working for you. It's really okay. I mean, as long as you're consistent taking it with food or consistently taking it without food, whatever is working for you works for you. But again, it does suggest taking it with food just to increase the absorption of the medication in your body. In regards to the immediate release versus extended release as well, it's important to remember that for extended release tablets, you should never cut them or try to crush them or anything like that. That destroys the extended release formulation in the tablet itself. So it's recommended to always take those whole. When it comes to the immediate release, it's okay to cut the tablet or crush it if you need to, but if you don't need to, just take the whole tablet. Something to note as well is that beta blockers like metoprolol can mask the symptoms of low blood sugar. Metoprolol can cause some of those side effects like dizziness, um, and it's keeping your heart rate really low. And so sometimes if you have low blood sugar, you may experience dizziness and a higher heart rate. And so when you're taking metoprolol, it's kind of counteracting those effects or maybe 
in the case of dizziness, creating the same effect. So it may mask some of your symptoms of low blood sugar. So if you are diabetic, be sure to just continue checking your blood sugar. Make sure your doctor is aware that, I mean, I'm sure your doctor is aware that you have diabetes if you do, and just kind of look out for that. Also, like I mentioned earlier, beta blockers sometimes do have an issue when patients have asthma. So like I kind of talked about with the cardio selective versus non-cardio selective, in the case of metoprolol, because it is cardio selective, that risk of asthma being worsened is much, much lower. However, at really high doses of metoprolol, it can have an effect on those beta receptors that are in the airways. So it could aggravate asthma a little bit, but again, your doctor should be aware of your medical history and should be really looking at that. But in terms of cardio selective beta blockers like metoprolol, that's not as much of a concern. Now, if you do have asthma and your doctor prescribes you a beta blocker that is not cardio selective, then it can worsen asthma and that is something to be mindful of and just make sure you talk to your doctor about that. So if you're curious on what the cardio selective beta blockers are, I can just tell you the quick acronym that I learned is BEMIN and there's also another acronym that's MANBABE. Choose whichever one you want to learn. If you really do want to learn this, honestly, you don't need to. But they are metoprolol, I'm gonna read it because, okay. Um, metoprolol, atenolol, nabivolol, bisoprolol, acibutolol, bataxolol, and esmolol. And those are all the cardio-selective beta blockers, meaning they work on the heart predominantly. And just from my personal experience, I mean, I've been taking metoprolol for almost four months now. And from my experience, I really haven't had many side effects from metoprolol. I haven't noticed really anything different other than my heart rate is being kept down. Before I took metoprolol and after my aortic dissection repair, my heart rate was constantly high. I even had moments where you know, my anxiety would really trigger my heart to just kind of go out of control, beating very fast, and I would get heart rates up, up into the 150s and 160s. But since taking metoprolol, it's really stabilized my heart. I feel so much calmer. Even after I started taking it, I kind of felt like my anxiety got better too, in a way. Maybe that's just like a placebo effect, or maybe it's, I mean, it makes sense. It's also calming my body as well but I really haven't had any major side effects. Of course, I have the dizziness and occasionally drowsiness, but it's livable and you kind of learn what to do and not to do to help that dizziness. But overall, I think metoprolol is a pretty great drug. I mean, it's been around for a very long time, has a lot of trials, a lot of studies involving its usage and different indications. So I think it's a a, a great drug and I really am taking it as a pharmacist who has taken metoprolol I haven't seen anything concerning um, of course I haven't been taking it that long I know that there's plenty of people out there who have been taking it for much longer and you may have had a completely different experience which I totally understand but this is just kind of from my perspective that it's been okay so far and I do think it's a good medication to take and always the benefits outweigh the risks so thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I am having a lot of fun making these YouTube videos and I'm really happy that people are finding them useful. Um, I just wanted to say if anybody has a specific request for a video that you would like me to make, please leave me a comment down below or message me and just let me know because I'm always looking for new ideas and I'm kind of just trying to figure out what's gonna help people the most. Um, I'd be happy to take suggestions, so please just let me know. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and just like the video. That would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you just could subscribe to my channel, if you would like to see more videos like this, I would be so, so grateful for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that everyone has an amazing day. And if you do have extra questions about metoprolol or beta blockers or anything, just comment below and I will try my best to answer it. But thank you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.